Welcome back to Recycle Model Railways. I'm Paul. I wasn't planning on putting a video on this week, but I'm in the middle of doing quite a few things, so I thought I'd chuck them on to see and see what I'm messing up this week. Let's see what we're doing. Okay, so as you can see, I normally have it all laid out nicely to get started, but I'm literally in the middle of stuff. So, what have we done? Well, I guess it was being on eBay again. Bought these 10 insulfish fish wagons, all triang, uh, for the bargain price of 19 99 Two quid a piece. Can't be bad, because I've looked them up and individually four pound fifty to five pound fifty plus postage this guy sold ten and i got him for 19.99 so another nice happy little purchase like i needed any more to do so weather i've been very busy with the insole fish boxes so as you can see they're all sitting here some of them have got the roofs off because the roofs would come off some of them, the roofs I'm sure are glued on. Managed to prise them all open. There are four holes in the bottom that go onto locators on these. However, they're very tight. And when I put this back together, I intend to glue this to that. So I've made the holes a little bigger for the sake of them being easy to just pop back into place got a tiny bit of movement but yeah just that's what I want to do so where am I going with these insole fish wagons well I've done my reading up I've read about them they ceased being used apparently in 1968 they were quite prominent once upon a time and it wouldn't be surprising to see a rake of 20 plus of them shooting down the east coastline from Edinburgh and Hull and other such places taking fish to London however my my layout plan is for 60s and 70s so I could use them as insole fish wagons and technically it's either that colour or it's that colour well, apparently they were white to begin with but when they were arriving at destinations they were so dirty people thought the fish weren't being tracked well or hygienically shall we say which is where they went to the blue so I quite like that and I'm seriously considering re I am going to repaint all of them because I've got so many different colours here it's ridiculous I think I've only actually got three out of ten in this colour um, you will notice that even though it says insole fish on this it is a different roof completely you can see that on this one we've got the water guards to stop water running off the roof and we've got vents we've got neither on here uh, have I thought about doing anything about it I have and then I thought no I don't want them to be all uniform I'm sure there must be something in there that was a little bit different and yes you could argue well it probably did have vents to allow the smell of fish to get out but I'm not bothered at the end of the day, when these are running around the layout, you're looking at this. Yes, you do see that, but you're looking at this. This is what you're looking at. So we're going to repaint them all. Um, there's nothing else to do to any of them. They're all in good nick. They're all in good order. So I'm going to repaint them. Well, I'm going to prime them first and repaint them. The bulk of the work has happened to these. Uh, out of the ten, three are plastic bogies so the plastic versions still says triang but obviously a much later edition so first thing was to get off the doing it again to get off the coupling off here so it was just a rivet pin straight through with the normal D I've drilled them drilled it off both ends um, cut it flush because it did have a bit of a protuberance so I've cut it flush so that I can set me any end pockets where I want it so the three plastic ones piece of cake 
just a matter of cut that off fat rub it down a little put the wheels on so there's one two three there already done the metal ones have been real fun a lot of work so if I can get this hang on move the curtain so I can have a bit more light so on these you had a piece of metal coming out and then it went down it was part of the whole cast came from underneath and came out nearly as far as the buffers and inside that was the hook uh, off the top now obviously that's no good to me I want any end pockets and because of how far down this metal box came it just was in the way so it was out with the Dremel and one of them little cotton wheel took a lot of work and these frames got really hot um, but what I would do is cut so far into it, put it down, pick another one up, start that one and rotate so I wasn't burning my fingers off. So we've cut them all off and as you can see, there, see the nice shiny bit? That's where I ground it flat. So that was job one, to get all the mountain blocks off for the couplings. Now some of them are slightly different, if I can find one. No, there we go. Just for the sake of showing you. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a round disc there and there's a round disc there. These had two pillars that still held the D-rings on. Now, again, I could have used the Triang replacements from Peters that go straight onto them, but they're in metal, which would have went drilling them and tapping them and everything else. So all I want to do is add on plastic card to what I need to get my pocket to the right height so that was job one get these all these metal bits off the next bit was getting these wheels out now I've just re-watched the video so I remember what I'm talking about because I watched it years ago um, there's a gentleman whose videos are still out there um, I don't think he's doing it anymore and I heard rumours he went to Australia but his channel was called uh, John's Amazing Trains and before that it was called Chams123 and he was brilliant with Triang stuff very clever lad anyway I've just watched the video to make sure that I know what I'm talking about so you can either go and watch John's Amazing Trains uh, replacing Triang wheels or you can watch this one and then go and see how he does it properly but the wheels that are on are plastic I don't want plastic wheels, they don't run. However, the shafts right through the middle are metal. And the shafts go from that side to that side. And these are all metal castings. So they do not want to come out easily. Now, John said you can, one wheel is fixed to the axle and one isn't. So you find out because there's a, a split in the middle. So you, you can hold one wheel, rotate the other. And see where the bearing rotates but the wheel doesn't that's the side that is free on the axle and he talks about using a two millimeter drift right through there and drive it in it'll then push the axle out and then just take it all apart I could have done that but I don't have a two millimeter drift and I don't want the old crappy wheels so what did I do? Dremel. Straight through the middle of the axle, on both, cut straight through them, took the wheels out, they're all in the bin. I'm not faffing about um, drifting them out. I don't see the point, I'm not going to use them and I'm not going to keep them and I don't want them for anything else. So they've gone the journey. So what's next? The next thing is, I also back a while ago when I bought all them little mini bogies I showed you that I'll now use the wheels for I also got a lot of other wheels at the time so this is your typical Hornby sport wheel and it just so happens that I need 20 and I've got 25 so yet again buying stuff on eBay um, cheaply or in bulk 
will get used. So these are going to go into the frames of the insole fish wagons. Here's the problem. Put that in there. Oh look, it fits. And then it falls out because the axle is not big enough. So, again, John's Amazing Trains came up with a solution for that. And in my box of tricks, I have a hundred bearings, shouldered bearings. So I'm going to try and clear up some of this mess and then I'm going to put this back on and I'm going to show you fitting shouldered bearings into these exactly how John did it so you can always go and watch John's channel if you want but it shows you how to fit Hornby wheels into metal chassis when your wheel axle is not long enough just like it is on here but what are you going to need? two two and a half millimeter drill bits you'll see why some blue tack and some super glue go and get all that together before you do it and then you know what you're going to be and then i'll show you what to do i'll be back in a second so in the last clip i was going to show you what to do that was a week ago so i have done a few bits during the week kind of getting a bit of a handle on things um, little tip for you, stupid comment from me, but when you're busy using your Dremel to grind off bits of metal, think about how hot it gets. Now, I have not a lot of feeling in my fingers, unfortunately, and I'm sure you can see right here, there's lots of holes in my work mat. They're caused by the four little buttons on here sat like that and some idiot me was sat like that holding it down while I was grinding away and I bent the hell out of that finger and I bent the hell out of that thumb and then I was drilling off one of the decouplings and some it got tangled and it bent the drill ripped it out of the dremel and went straight into my thumb so be careful people when you're doing stuff don't be like me and end up cut the bits like an idiot so what have I learned from last week apart from all of that? Um, the 10 wagons. They're all labelled as Triang, but there's three distinct different chassis here. Can't remember if I said that on the last clip. So the plastic one, dead easy as I said. Then you've got this kind of metal one that had the two round poles on. And then this one that's got the flat bar. So if I didn't mention that on the last one, just because of cutting but it also seems to make a difference between the distance between the axle boxes on every single one of them which is strange but it did so if you're lucky and you've got a plastic one the wheels pop straight in just like they do on any other model no faffing about no messing around just drop your Hornby wheels in job done so the three plastic ones are done, they need a bit of tidying up, um, but they're done. Then we get onto these ones, the one with the two metal poles and the one with the solid metal block. There's a difference in the width, as I've said, between the axles, which is a real unexpected, lovely surprise. Um, I also found that on quite a few of these, these axle boxes um, were bent either in or bent out whichever now let me give you another little lesson this metal is probably what 60 years old it doesn't take to be it doesn't take being forced to be straight with a pair of pliers doesn't like it as you can see here off this hang on let me see if I can get some more light in as you can maybe see here and possibly more so on the inside there's an awful lot of glue or epoxy to be correct because I had to glue them back on so I learnt that lesson quickly and all I did after that was I used a little blowtorch and I mean it's about that high a little blowtorch 
just ran it literally across here where the axle boxes meet in the main chassis till I knew it was hot enough and then gently put them back into shape so again do not attack them with pliers they don't like it and they snap really easy heating them up seemed to do the trick and allowed me to bend them so as you can maybe see in the background here one two three four five six seven eight nine nine out of the ten have wheels on uh, this one hasn't because the axle box snapped off it and I've left it to dry all week before I do any work but it's now nice and solid now the one thing I have learned is trying to do this on camera without getting your hands in the way is almost impossible so what I'm going to do is talk you through it because if I try and do it while I'm filming you are not going to be able to see what the hell I'm talking about so you've got your frame now there's an, another issue with this particular frame apart from the fact that I broke it the holes for the wheels on this one don't come all the way through all the rest of them do they're all open axles that's gonna be a problem because I feed in the bearings from the back so I'm gonna try and do it where I put the bearings in from here and gauge where I need the bearings to be I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute and then see if I can get the wheels in but I don't think it's gonna happen so let's presume for the sake of argument that this is an open bearing an open axle here so best thing to do put a little bit of blue tack on each side of the axle box okay not a lot enough so that well put your wheel in first let's do it that way put your wheel in first it's not going to want to sit on both sides because the axle is not long enough but shove a little bit of blue tack in there between the axle and the wheel and then shove a bit of blue tack in here this is just to hold your wheel for now otherwise you're going to keep it's going to keep dropping out while you're trying to mess about once you've got that roughly in position feeding through the hole in the axle box here drop a bearing in now on the last time I did this video I was talking about shoulder bearings mm, shoulder bearings didn't work too well for me so I bought plain brass bearings from Peters so what you're going to do is you're going to slide a bearing into there they're very small and they're quite difficult to get hold of but push the bearing into the hole and once you push the bearing in get a little bit of blue tack which you can't see a little bit of blue tack and carefully push it into the hole so in effect you're pushing the blue tack against the bearing do one side flip it repeat the procedure bearing blue tack push once you've done that then you need your two drills that I spoke about your two two millimeter drills basically put it on a flat surface and put a two millimeter drill one side and one the other and push them against each other what you're looking to do is to centralize the bearing so that it centralizes the wheel now you can push it hard enough where your wheel will not spin very very important that you make sure that you don't push so hard that your wheel's got no spin in it you should be able to flick it and it should run for a while if you flick it and it does a turn it's too tight in that case push against one side of the wheel just to give you that little bit of ease once you're happy with how it's running then clean or clear off your blue tack from the sides of the bearings here so that it is flush and then with a little bit of super glue 
drop a little bit of super glue on top of the blue tack and put it to one side do one wheel set at a time give this blue tack this glue with the blue tack time to go off before you start messing with the other end we went to Peter's and we bought this nice colour blue I don't know how well that shows up on camera uh, I think that's pretty close to the Inselfish colour and if you want to know it is P153 Provincial Light Blue and it's Regional Railways Scott Rail Light Blue and it's a satin dull made by Phoenix Precision so why did I buy two tins for so few trucks well a few weeks ago I did Uncle Jed's Locos and one of the guys out there said oh, I was looking forward to washing your hand painting them so okay they're not as fancy as painting a loco because obviously the finish has got to be perfect but I'm going to hand paint these only because most of the lids are fastened on and I can't be bothered trying to mask around that to spray it so we're going to hand paint each of the boxes uh, and I will put it on even though it might bother them direct out here and if you don't want to watch it you can either fast forward or just end the video and go on to watch something else but we're going to hand paint them blue after they have had a coat of white primer white because we're putting a light colour on and I have a belief that if I spray them with my usual dark grey etch primer I will lose how light the blue is not to a massive degree but I'm 90% certain that a white primer is the perfect base for such a light colour uh, the roofs are going to go grey uh, I haven't decided which grey yet because I've got a couple in my box quick update for you <coughs> so what have I done since we last uh, had the clip on right we've managed to remove the two roofs that I didn't want the ones I changed my mind on they were really really well glued on um, these roofs for anyone attempting it let me get the camera you've got a ridge around all four sides all four sides and whoever done it had put glue on every single side all the way around so I had to resort to using my Dremel cut through the middle and then bend it in over to get it to snap away that got most of it off and then it was just down to a sharp knife to remove the rest so as you've noticed I've still got a roof in my hand I have glued some of the roofs back on now uh, as I said the roofs are going to go grey um, you can see if I carefully pick it up I've got them in white primer ready for the blue um, and I've left could have put you, know, you might be asking why hasn't he put that on and you know that I haven't got those two the reason I haven't put the roofs on is because three of these boxes are going on the plastic chassis now the metal chassis give weight to the actual vehicle um, as you've no doubt seen by now I like to add weight to things and yes yeah, some people might say oh you're going to ruin the low cause no I'm not I'm not adding that much to them I just want enough so that it doesn't feel like it's going to blow over if you blow it so I'm going to add probably 20 grams to each container which should get me up to roughly the weight of a metal chassis I think it feels like it's about there um, so by adding 20 grams into three they can sit on the plastic chassis I've got and at least then there's a little bit of weight behind me I mean don't get me wrong these things are not heavy even with the metal chassis there's not a lot of weight so right now I'm testing how clever I'm going to be with my video editing later I kind of wrap this video up um, <coughs> prior to this and then realised I said I was going to show you a bit of my hand brushing because somebody had mentioned earlier they wanted to see it so <coughs> I've already done five of these 
So this is the blue I spoke about earlier that is as close as I can get out of a tin to represent the insel fish colour which I think, personally, I'm pretty happy with. So for the sake of the gentleman who said about hand brushing, I'm going to do a couple just for the sake of it, I'm not trying to teach anybody here just me showing you what I do because I should have done it once before so I, because I've done five um, I have already added prior to this a little bit of Phoenix thinners into my paint uh, which is probably evaporating a little bit but I'm quite happy with the consistency so how do I hand brush? Well, I'm not saying I'm the best in the world, but I will say that I have bought some models out of the kind of crap that I buy in the past where I think, wow, well, that's a bad paint job. And sometimes it's why I repaint things. So, here it goes. This is me, how I do it. First thing is just kind of to get it on. So obviously I'm just tucking it up under the roof and getting into creases and what have you for me this is the main concern right now is to make sure that I've got into panel lines and what have you um, I mean at the end of the day I don't need to teach anybody to paint we've all got houses and we have to paint the bloody things every so often don't we um, this is just it's just a little bit on the smaller scale and working at home but as I said I have seen models I've bought in the past where I thought wow well, they must have put it on with a catapult so there you go you've seen the basics I've got it on I've made sure I've got all the creases for me this part now is the most important part just like you would if you were working at home and you were painting a door all I'm going to do now is go backwards and forwards a few times just to sorry there was a hair there I just want to sort of thin it out spread the paint around and make sure that it's not clogging anywhere now I don't know whether I can get this on camera it's hard to tell with the light but what you're looking for is to still be able to see the detail and see the boards that the box is made from now if you can see them now then when it dries if you can see that it should be even better and that's it that's all my, all my, my secret if you like um, is with regards to hand painting is get it on a little bit of thinners in your paint get it on um, most important thing is to just get the paint on uh, don't worry too much at this particular point you need to make sure that you've got oh, another hair uh, just get it on make sure you've got all your panel lines are in that you haven't missed anything because what you don't want to be doing in my opinion is coming back later on when it's dried and adding a bit of paint on because you missed something because when you come to add that paint on it's going to sit on top of your dry paint and trust me it will stand out you will see it and you might not be happy about where you end up with regards to a finish so again I've got the detail done I've made sure I've covered everything I've made sure I haven't missed anything just check when you've got lines like this check both sides make sure you've not missed the detail and move on last thing I've just had a little break and while I was having a little break I was catching up on some of the channels that I watch and one of those is an old friend of mine or I'd like to consider him to be an old friend because as some of you know I had this channel on ooh, six years ago or more maybe well probably more than six years ago 
uh, when I first started doing this and I got quite friendly with Graham Falston of Lakeside Model Railway lovely guy used to have a little personal chat with him on the phone from time to time nice nice fella anyway I've just been watching Graham's latest two releases one explaining where he's been for a while and the next one with his cement wagon that's motorised so why have I brought Graham up well for one reason only uh, and it kind of follows a the theme unfortunately there is two other gentlemen who I have recently I'm not a great one for commenting it's very rare to comment but when I really feel the need to say something I will and um, Dragon Junction a while ago also was complaining about the same thing and I, I think but I'm not sure I think it's maybe Harold Road <coughs> that I also passed comment on now Harold Road seems to be a bit like me thick skinned hard faced couldn't give a monkeys what you think it's a case of like here we go this is what I'm doing and this is how I'm doing it and if you don't like it go and watch another channel anyway I felt the need to step in particularly with Dragon Junction um, because he was a bit downhearted about what was being said etc and I passed comment there and I remember a few months ago that Graham, bless him, was a little, shall we say, down in the dumps. Um, and I did send him a message, you know, concerned, hoping he was all going to be okay. And he's gone up the scene for a little bit. And truthfully, it's nice to see him back. Really nice to see him back. And he mentioned that as part of his therapy, he's bought this wooden boat. I was very keen to see what it was and it was exactly what I had a feeling it was going to be. Um, maybe I can sort of pick out what Graham's taste is. He strikes me as the, the type that would probably be seen on the Riviera flying around in his little wooden boat. But anyway, what's my point? Because I'm rambling as always. He put on the, you know, it's helped him through his therapy and if you don't like boats then don't bother watching it, you know. Well, I've got two things to say. Number one, okay, it's a boat on a model railway channel. So what? Does it really matter? Does it really, is it really that much of an issue? It's modelling, is modelling, surely. Surely, that's all it comes down to. He's just shown you what else he's been doing. We all have little other things that we do. I have other hobbies. And okay, I might put one on here sometime, and I might not. Um, yesterday I was out with my son at the North Yorkshire Moves Railway because it's not too far away from where I live. And I took a couple of videos, there was a lovely big 9F come in, um, just steaming up and then took the, took uh, quite a few carriages out to Pickering. Have I put it on here? Nah. Why? Because I couldn't be bothered to sit there and video loads and loads of this thing pulling out the station yeah it might be nice I might chuck it in as a clip anyway where am I going with this rattling on again so my point is this Graham has put something on okay it's still modelling people so for all you keyboard warriors who might be out there thinking well we're going to have a ramp to rave because he's not putting trains on it's, mo it's boats don't bother yourselves if you don't like it, don't watch it. It's as simple as that, innit? Give the guy a break. He's just told you, before he put the photos on and what have you, and showed you his boat, that it helped him. So if it helped him, great. Let him get on with it. Stop harassing people. Stop going on about what they're doing, or how they're doing it, or anything else. They're out there, they're giving things a go, and more importantly, in this particular case, it's helped him. So before you start thinking about hitting the keyboard with, oh my God, it's a boat, it's not trains, or any other comment, 
just think about what you're doing, will you? The guy's telling you it helped him to, help to, to get better in himself, to make him feel better. And that's all that matters. That's all that really matters. So don't bother hitting the keyboards, folks. Give the guy a break. Let him crack on. It's helping him. Anyway, rant over. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate your time. And I'll uh, catch you on the next one. Take care, folks. Bye for now.